Okay. Um, so you just released a new album, American Fall, a few months ago. Can you tell me a little about it? Yeah. Uh, was there one song on the album that, like, um, that you really enjoyed working on or has a very, like, the, I'm trying to think of the right word, but, like, was there just one song that, like, really stands out to you that, like, you really enjoyed working on and... Um, 
also militarism is valued over almost anything else. We, this this country spends more money on on its military, and I would say uh, on imperialism than uh, any other country in the world. And you'd have to add up the next dozen countries that put all of their military spending together to even come close to matching the United States, and that includes Russia, China, Germany. I mean, these are countries with massive military budgets, but they, they don't even come close to what the United States spends. Um, so, you know, I, I just think that for me, American Attraction is a song that is exploring something really an uncomfortable truth about our country and something that I think is really important to face so that we could change it. Um, and, you know, so musically we kind of, because it is an uncomfortable uh, topic, we wanted to kind of write a song that was that felt a little uncomfortable for us as far as performing it and writing it. And one of the things that we try to do as a result of that is I actually sing the song really like in a low key where I don't sing very often. So that was a cool challenge for me. and I. I, you know, I think creatively, um, I, I enjoyed that challenge of writing that song. Yeah, and I, when I was looking at the credits for the album, I noticed that you were working with Benji Madden and Steve yeah. Ayello. Yeah. Uh, How did that come about, and what was it like working with them? Well, I actually loved working with both of those guys so much. Um, Benji's incredible. I mean, Benji figures out what you need to be successful to finish a project. And then he helps you get those, those things, you know. Um, in this case, I mean, he invited us out to his studio in Los Angeles and said, you know, why don't you guys come work out of my studio? And you know, you can take all the time that you need and, you know, it would take all the pressure off of you as far as dealing with your day-to-day -day lives at home and get out of that box and, um, you know, come into a new environment. And what's really cool about their studio is because they have a management company, there are always different creative people walking through the door, you know, and, uh, so that, that's something that was really, really interesting. Like, it's, it's a really, really creative um, environment to be in. Um, the other really cool thing, though, that Bench does is he really identifies the direction that a song is headed. And he'll, you, you know, like, he'll walk in, like, if, you know, like, he would walk in and hear what we were working on. And he would say, like, wow, that's really cool. I hear it going in this direction. And he would really give it a, a, a nudge um, and you know, really feel like what that song, where that song was supposed to go. And um, you know, he's got a great kind of um, instinct for doing that. And uh, so it was, it was just really amazing to work with him. I mean, he's, he's there's a reason, like, he's been involved in so many successful projects, and there, there's a reason why, you know, uh, he's an incredibly talented person. Um, and, and, you know, what I think where we really connected with Benji is that, you know, Benji is not an outwardly political person so much, although I do think our ideologies match pretty, pretty much, you know? Yeah. Um, but... But what, what Benji does, and I think where we really connect with Benji, is when Benji comes across something that he really believes in, he really gets behind it. And he really enjoys helping people without any that kind of, um, you know, without, really without any kind of benefit to him. Like, he, you know, he, he does things for so many people and there's, there's no payoff for him. You know, he just believes in it so he gets behind it. And I, I think that, you know, that's a place where we really connect with Benji. And, um, you know, so I, I could just go on all day on Benji. I mean, it blew me away. I, I loved working with him. Um, Steve is so incredibly talented. 
just mentioned Warp Tour and I know that you've played on Warp Tour a bunch of times over the years. What are your thoughts about the tour ending? Because I know it's like a big thing for all these bands and the people that come to see the bands. That was one reason I got in the doing interviews and shooting bands and stuff was Warp Tour. <laughs> cool, cool, yeah. I mean, so many people did, you know, so many people. I mean, there were so many people that I, I run into and they recognize me and they're like, the first time I saw your band was on Warp Tour, you know, so that was, it was, uh, it, it went, and just like what you said, you know, like I have so many friends who are in music production now or they're photographers or whatever it is, and, and it happened as a result of Warped Tour, so it, it leaves behind a pretty cool legacy in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, I used to sneak in uh, cameras to take pictures, <laughs> and then I would write up an article. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. But it's, like, when you're starting out, it's hard to get any approval for anything until you have yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I know. It's a... Uh, it's a thankless business in a lot of ways. <laughs> Do you have any, like, memories from Warp Tour that really stand out to you? That something really cool happened? Well, I kind of talked about it just in the, in yeah. the fact of... Yeah, I didn't know if there was, like, a specific show that you played or a city or, like, a fan that came up to you and said that, like, you... I don't know. <laughs> You helped well, them. You know, the, the really like one of the coolest things about Warp 
mentor for me was doing, you know, we would do a meet and greet every day and anybody could come talk to us and, you know, the, the interactions that you would have with people. And because that's my favorite thing really about being at the band and going on tour is the people that we get to meet and hearing about their lives. And a war tour, what was really cool, um, especially this last year on Warp Tour, was that every day we would have probably like anywhere from two to six transgender kids that would come up to our meet and greet and talk to us. And what I thought was really great about that and really inspiring about that is that, you know, it, it, that's a, sometimes it's a really dangerous choice to come out as trans and be trans in public. And, you know, these kids would felt like, okay, I can go to war tour and be who I am. And not only that, but I felt like really privileged that they would come up to our table because they knew that we were going to be friendly towards them and that they could come up and talk to us. And, you know, most of the time we never even discussed uh, the issue, you know, the transgender issue, we, we just talked. And, um, and that was really special to me because, I, you know, I know that that's the first time that's ever happened to us on a work tour. In the past, there would be gay kids that would come up and talk to us. Um, but this past year was the first year that there were trans kids. And to me, I thought that was really special because, um, you know, or I know that those kids were out there in the past, but they they didn't feel safe enough to actually be who they are. Yeah. And 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 so it was really special to me that this was we're we're in a time where or at least you know there was an environment that that they felt like they could be who they were, and and I felt like really honored to to be a part of that. I think that's awesome that like your band and so many other bands that were in the that are in the scene are like ed- everyone feels accepted and then they feel comfortable talking to these bands and your band and yeah yeah it, 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 uh, I think that that is something special and that's what drew me into the punk and hardcore scene I mean it was that you know it it was a place of acceptance for for people who were outside of the mainstream and you know as long as you treated other people respectfully you were you were included and you know i think you know every anti-black show you know that's the environment that we set out to create you know and one of empathy and one of respect and and you know we're we're not just a band you know we're a community and um you know, and, and that's why it is, to me, you know, much more important than just a song or a lyric or, you know, a, a haircut. It's, it's really about trying to build a community that, that's trying to um, showcase a, a, a different vision for the world. You know, and you know, we, we live in like this like really materialist, commercial, consumer, you know, more more prone society and you know, just trying to show uh, a different way of living um, you know especially when it and put those things on display you know the idea of with, like the vegan lifestyle and thinking outside of yourself and, and you know being open and, and accepting to other people um, and, uh, those are things that really drew me to this community yeah um, I, I will tell you another like a, 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 a another warp tour experience that is a little less complicated um, when you know warp tour was the first time that I played with a lot of bands that like I really looked up to and they were heroes to me so for example like Flogging Molly and uh, Bad Religion and uh, so many other bands that I, I remember, I'll never forget, you know, the first time um, I looked side stage on World Tour and Brian Baker from Bad Religion was watching our set. That's awesome. And, yeah, I'll always remember that and it, because I was like, holy shit, like that's Brian Baker from Bad Religion watching our set, you know, and, and him telling me after that, you know, he really liked our band and that, that was really special. 
special to me because, um, you know, he, he's always been, you know, he's a bass player of my threat. <laughs> he, he was, uh, you know, he's in bad religion. I mean, he's somebody that, uh, you know, is always an inspiration to me. That's so awesome that you... But that's, I'm seeing now, like, everyone gets to play with their idols and, like, become friends with them now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. It is a, a really, really cool thing. So currently you're out on the Silence Equals Violence Tour. How has it been going so far, and are there any highlights from the tour that you can share? song from the new album that you've been playing that the fans are really really enjoying live um what we we made and mostly the songs that we we made uh pretty specific videos to um we've been playing when the wall falls which is one of my favorite songs to play and um we've been playing the criminals um we've been playing racists which um, you know, I think is an important song to be playing in these times because you know it's really a song that is about confronting people who are racist or who have racist tendencies, but they don't realize that they have racist tendencies and they don't realize that what they're doing is racism and it's something that it, you know, statements that they're making or actions that they're taking actually reinforce institutional racism. And, uh, you know, it's a song that I like to talk about before before we actually play it. Um, because, I, you know, so much of, of what we have from Donald Trump and the people who surround him is, is defending racism and putting racism, racist ideas and ideology forward. And... Uh, you know, it's a song that, that talks about confronting that. Because I just, you know, I think that there was a time where a lot of people felt like, okay, well, we've had a black president, so, you know, racism's kind of dead. Because, you know, you hear somebody say something racist and, oh, you just kind of let it go. You know, it, it, and the song, you know, really talked about the idea that racism is, is alive and well. And when you hear something, even if it's just a little thing, it's, it's really important to confront it. And it's really important to, to let people know that, uh, you know, as a society, that we're not going to 
allow that, that kind of attitude and, and those kind of ideas. And, and that's why, you know, with Donald Trump, it's, it's something that we have to confront as a society. You know, when, when he calls certain countries shit old country, you know, that's, he's, he's sending out a dog whistle to certain people, you know, to, to his base. Yeah, like, I, I don't get, like, half of the stuff that he's doing, and I think it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> but I also feel like it's not all him that's doing this. There's also people behind him making decisions, too, and some of those people have probably been there a long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. Yeah, it would be nice if they got rid of all those people and brought in some <laughs> younger people that had fresh ideas and stuff and weren't so, like, about money and, like, hating on certain groups of people. And but Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, I think the way we get there is to, to first, you know, when we, when we, come across people like Trump, we confront them. But also to, you know, organize with other people and connect with other people that feel the same way we do. And, you know, for that reason, we have certain groups out on this tour. Um, and, and, you know, it's something that we, we try to do, you know, and the idea of community building is we have the Love, Hope, Strength out here, which is um, an organization that uh, deals with uh, ending cancer, we have Amnesty International here, human rights group, we have uh, Voice for the Innocent, which is a support group for victims of sexual assault, and, you know, what's inspiring for me is that every day we're around these people who are doing this really great work, and, um, you know, they're, they're the kind of people that give me hope, you know, and, make me realize that, you know, for all the hate that is out there, there are people that are confronting it and trying to change the world and make it better. And it's, you know, what I, I love about having these organizations out here is it's like, if you are a person that's feeling like you, you want to make a difference and you don't know how to make a difference, you can talk to these people and find out how you can get involved and, and what you can do to, to make a change in the world and to, to help someone. And you know, once you start to get involved with activism, you learn a couple things. One, you realize, like, okay, you, you, you have some hope. Uh, two, you make some friends, it, it, and it's actually a lot of fun. And three, you know, you actually can make a difference in the world. Like, with Amnesty International, for example, the work that they do literally saves the lives of people. And, you know, when you realize that you you're involved in that, you play a small role in that, that's something that, you know, you're like, wow, I literally was involved in helping to free a political prisoner because of the volunteer work I did with the Amnesty International. That's a really powerful thing to experience. And, for example, with the Amnesty International, they do it through letter drives where they, they fight with, you know, they, they collect enough signatures and letters to, to put pressure on government to release political prisoners and to fight for human rights in other countries. And, um, and you know, so it's not like this big, burdensome, overwhelming thing that you have to do, but it's a small thing that you can do and incorporate into your life. And, and it, it, it's actually really meaningful. Like, you can imagine yourself as, like, a political prisoner sitting in a cell somewhere and you have no hope. And then these letters start to pile up and all of a sudden, like, you know, your name is in the news and there's the possibility for you to be released. It's, it's life-changing. So after this tour is over, what are, do you have more tour plans in the works or anything scheduled? We always have tour plans in the, in the works. Um, yeah, you know, we, we do. Uh, we're we're, we're going to go over to Europe. Um, in the summer and do some festivals. Um, we're doing some festivals here in the U.S. Uh, the best place for people to go is just go to our website. It's, it's got to be there.
there. And, um, but yeah, we're, we're doing some pretty cool stuff. We're, I'm, I'm excited we're going to play some shows um, the Offspring in Italy. Um, that's awesome. That, 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 yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to. And, um, but yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. So I'm uh, excited about what, what we have coming. How do you feel the music industry has changed since you started Anti-Flag, and where do you see it heading in the next five to ten years? Well, it's changed in that things have become so decentralized, um, and I, I think that's a really good thing. You know, I think that, um, you know, before you had to be on a big record label, yet for people to get your music, you know, you had to get distribution. Um, and we've, we've moved away from that, you know, and people can record their art themselves and they can get their hands on a laptop and they can put it out there in the world and then people can decide, you know, and I, I, I think that that trend is just going to continue. Um, and, and I think that makes for more creativity, you know, I think it makes for um, more possibilities for, for people to hear cool art that they might otherwise never hear and hear fresh ideas that they might never hear. Um, of course, it means that there's, like, in some way, the overload of music that, you know, there's only so much that people can take, like, it, you know, in jest. Um, and so people have to decide where they want to find the music and how they listen to it. But um, I, I find it really exciting, you know, and I, I, I think it's a really cool time to, um, to be uh, involved in music. It's, as a musician, um, in a lot of ways, if you're as a like, professional, I guess you want to call it, musician, a full-time musician, somebody make a living playing music, in some ways it has gotten harder because, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people just, as far as music sales go, they don't really exist like they did. And, um, you know, especially for a, a smaller band like Anthem, yeah, like, or an even smaller band, you know, that no such thing as, as royalties anymore. So um, if you find music that you like and you find an artist that you like, I think it's really important to support them directly, you know, and uh, buy their music, buy their merch or whatever, you know, if, you, if, if there's somebody that's inspiring and important to you. Um, but what I, what I do like is that, you know, they're... The element of this kind of big entity that's out there that sometimes was putting out music just to capitalize off of, you know, monetarily off of music, but you know, it didn't really have music, the music didn't really hold value to them. I think it's exciting that that element is being more and more removed from, uh, from, from the music community. Yeah, and Another thing that I've been noticing, like, with music is people are not releasing, like, full-length albums anymore. They're releasing a few songs here or there, an EP or something, and they're all digital. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's where it's going to be, you know, and there's, I think there'll be the boutique kind of releases where people release, you know, uh, vinyl and things like that for people who really, really want to collect. Um, people, you know, for... for, for you know, people in the music community who are really hardcore about what they do. Um, but yeah, I mean, so many people, the way that they're experiencing music now is like one or two songs at a time. So it's like you put out a record and a lot of people don't listen to the record. You know, they, they listen to the first one or two tracks. And so, you know, I think that as a result of that, musicians are reassessing how they want to release songs and music and ideas. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you would like to add or to say to your fans? I think we did pretty good. It, uh, yeah, I hope people come out to the show. It's been, um, the show's been great. So, you know, clearly we want to have a good time. And, uh, the more people that come, the better time we have. So I hope people come out. But I, I think it, it's going to be a great show. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, it was really, really fun. I really enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day. Yeah.